guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Amber, and today we're going to talk all about the best peptide therapy options for athletic performance. So maybe you are a weekend warrior or you are regularly training in the gym. We're going to talk about all of the options in the peptide world to help here. This is going to be the ultimate guide on peptides for athletic performance to improve your energy and to improve your recovery. So let's get started. And of course, medical disclaimer, I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor. So all of this information is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not specific or personalized medical advice. So always consult with your doctor before beginning new supplements, new workout regimen, anything added to your health routine. These are some of my favorite options for athletic performance. So we have a bunch of peptides here. I'll walk through each of these, what they mean, what they do, and how it can help. So my favorite combination is listed at the top here. We have CJC ibumorelin. And really the goal of utilizing all of these peptides is either to improve athletic performance, so energy through mitochondrial support, supporting the muscle tissue, or improving recovery. CJC ipamorelin is this really amazing combo. I love using it for women's health. I've used it many times myself. It's a peptide that you want to cycle. You don't want to be on this peptide for long periods of time, but six to 12 week cycle, this can be really helpful. That's what I've done for myself. And ideally this is a hundred micrograms, which is about 10 units, the way I have my vial of peptides diluted and at max three times a day for five days a week, right? So that's a general protocol that can be used. Tessamorelin is a peptide that's very similar to ipamorelin. It's a little bit more specific for body fat, visceral fat, helping to lower LDL and some of those lipids that can be elevated. I think about tessamorelin as more specific for men's health, a lot, lot better for losing that tire around the waist if you know what I mean. Whereas CJC ipamorelin tends to be really good for women's health. It helps with deep sleep. It helps with improving workout recovery. And for many women, what I really like about the daytime dosing is that I felt it improved my cognitive performance. So the body produces growth hormone about every three to four hours, hours throughout the day. And we get these different pulsations every three to four hours that support our energy, support our repair and recovery. That biggest pulsation of growth hormone happens around midnight 1 a.m. And so these peptides like CJC epimorelin or tessamorelin or even MK677, which I really don't use as much, lots of side effects, so there's, I'll explain why. But these peptides taken before bed can really improve that production of growth hormone at night while you're sleeping, which is gonna improve recovery, repair, and how you feel the next day, really. CJC epimorelin and tesamorelin are both injections, whereas MK677 is actually a capsule form. MK677 has some side effects in that it can increase hunger and appetite where you would want to eat the fridge, really. It can really dramatically increase appetite. It can increase cortisol. It can increase prolactin. And in men, we don't want higher stress hormone, cortisol levels, or prolactin. So to avoid those side effects, Tesmorelin or ipamorelin CJC combo is a lot better option here. The time where MK677 can come in really handy is when you have uh, usually a person who's really thin stature, lack of muscle mass, trying to build lean muscle mass and increase appetite is actually a positive side effect rather than a negative one where we're trying to increase workouts and increase food consumed. That's where this one can be potentially helpful. It's been used in to prevent muscle wasting in older people as well. So that's where I use MK677, but it's, it's not one I go to often. Now we have PEG MGF which is also an injectable peptide. This is a sample. Of course, this is not medical advice. This is just a sample protocol. And this one is really good. It stands for pegylated mechanical growth factor. It's really good for muscle repair, bone repair, supporting muscle growth. It can help with some of those risk factors for heart disease, uh, protective against stroke. And then it also can have this cognitive benefit. So I think about this as being really good for muscle repair. 
this peptide. Pig MGF is actually a variant of IGF-1, and it's found in the muscle and the bones, tendons, and the brain in response to an increased load of stress. And so it's actually something the body makes as a repair factor. So we can add that in to help muscle repair. For this reason, it's used by athletes, bodybuilders, anybody training heavily to help with their repair process, right? So if you can repair faster, you can get back to training and increase the load placed on the muscle to get better results in a shorter period of time. But repair is the key here. IGF-1 LR3 is another peptide that it, it's very similar to CJC ipamorelin, testamorelin working on growth hormones. So it's an analog, very similar to your body's own IGF. And we can actually test those levels. So IGF stands for insulin growth factor. And it's something that the liver produces as a result of growth hormone production. IGF-1 and LR3 will also regulate muscle hypertrophy, muscle repair, the same way that your body's own IGF will help with that. Right. And so the goal with these is to not constantly stimulate this pathway. We want to add this in at specific times post workout, is the only time this is really given uh, to help with that repair process. And then we want other times where we're fasted, where we're not stimulating IGF 1, uh, but this one can be quite helpful. And you don't necessarily need to use all of these at once. Using strategic peptides and stacking them can be really helpful. So a peptide stack just means multiple peptides that we're adding together for a synergistic effect. And I really like stacking peptides. I find that adding any more than three at a time can be overwhelming. So I'll usually start people on two, maybe three at once. If they've never been on peptides before, we usually start conservatively until they get used to it, the protocol and, and how to add those in. 5-amino-1 NQ is a peptide that I really like. It helps with more of the metabolic pathways. It really helps with NAD recycling in the cell. And if you know about NAD, you know it's really good for mitochondrial support. It helps energy production in the mitochondria. And so when we think about athletics and training, NAD is one strategy to improve the endurance during workouts, but you could also pair that or just use 5-amino-1-MQ to help with NAD recycling in the cell. So this one helps with, it's known to help with fat loss, but it's actually a capsule. So a lot of these peptides come as injectables. This is one that comes as a capsule form. And you can see right here, you can expect to see improved physical performance about two weeks after starting something like 5-amino-1 IQ. And this is something that you'd want to get through a doctor, through a compounding pharmacy. This pharmacy no longer makes it. This is just an information page. Of course, none of this is personalized medical information, but it's just information about what it is, how it works. Uh, if you know about CERT1 and a lot of the research that's been done on mitochondrial effect and these genes called sirtuins, uh, this really helps with CERT1, right? So we know CERT1 is a longevity gene. It helps in a lot of these chronic health conditions that many people are affected by now. 5-amino-1-MQ also blocks something called NNMT, which is really predominantly found in fat tissue. And so it can help with body composition goals as well. So we'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, experiences. Have you used any of these combinations that you've seen helpful uh, in the past? or other topics that you're interested in learning about as far as peptides go. So leave that in the comments. I am so thrilled to have you part of the community. Thanks for tuning in. And if there's any other topics we can cover, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining the channel and we'll see you next week.